Hi, I'm Keisha McIntosh Allen, an assistant professor of education at University of Maryland, Baltimore County. 2020 brought a lot of things to to our awareness and to our consciousness. Gloria Latson Billings talks about the quadruple pandemics that we were living through in 2020. So there was continued racism, there was COVID-19, the economic downturn, and then uh, global warming. It seemed as though these multiple pandemics that disproportionately affected black and brown people um, white folks uh, became more conscious that these were happening. And so there were a lot of efforts um, in my own neighborhood in Columbia, Maryland. Um, there was a, a street that has Black Lives Matter signs going um, up the street within education. Um, there um, were conversations about learning loss and the need for students to have access to resources that they didn't have access to prior to COVID. And then also a lot of talk about restorative justice um, started to come to a head. But a year later, we're not um, necessarily seeing that much progress. Um, and so, you know, one of the things that I've been thinking about is our need to accept and understand that we're cultural beings and that when we don't name that, we default to to whiteness and white supremacy as the culture um, that is normalized within our schools. So when I am talking about white supremacy culture, I'm referring to values such as um, having a, a sense of urgency or um, valuing transactional relationships or transactional goals over transformative ones. And the reasons why that matters is because um, values such as those create um, distance and disconnection between people. It also fosters um, or creates or enables um, the dehumanization of people of color. Being self-possessed and self-determined is a hallmark of being human. And so when we think about um, schools that deculturalized individuals throughout history, it was about control. And so the flip to that isn't anti-racist practices. Yes, those are important, um, but it's also repairing the rotten foundation uh, that schooling has been founded upon, which is white supremacist culture. And so humanization moves um, individuals of color from um, self-hate, from divide and conquer and from sub-oppression to self knowledge of self and self-love, to solidarity and to self-determination. And so when we think about teaching, um, yes, um, humanizing pedagogy for individual teachers is important, but we also have to think about these larger systems that um, teachers are teaching within. And something that I've been thinking about, which I'm calling um, humanizing school ecosystems. So the work of individual teachers and individual teachers who are culturally responsive or who are um, humanizing pedagogues is important. But we also need to think about the systems that teachers teach within that are intended to subjugate black and brown children. And, 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 and thinking about humanizing school ecosystems and thinking about the policies and practices that enable teachers to ground their practices in the funds of knowledge of students and helping them to ground their students and knowledge of self. Uh, Joel Spring talks about uh, how schools historically have been used to deculturalize various uh, racial and ethnic groups uh, throughout history. So when we think about Indian boarding schools for, um, for indigenous people, we think about um, the denial of education for um, African Americans. And so, you know, we talk a lot about anti-racist pedagogy, but the flip to that is thinking about humanization and, and humanization really being 
people of color's ability to realize, um, to, to, to be self-actualizing and to uh, be self-determinant. Questions that administrators and educators might want to consider is, how is my pedagogy or how are my practices and policies life-affirming? How are they helping students to see and to value the cultural ways of knowing and being that originating within their homes and within their families? Another thing for administrators and for educators to consider is as you are uh, working toward being culturally responsive and humanizing um, your students, how are educators within the school building humanized? How are they seen as experts of their craft? How are they given autonomy to make the decisions that are grounded in what they know of their students? and that are grounded in student learning.